question that I was getting to with that is technical. Sonar, how far could you track, could you track, say, Russian subs? Uh, because the area is massive, and how do you know if you have these cables running between us and Europe? How do you know if a Russian sub starts tapping into any of these uh, cables? Okay, so that's well, kind of two, two, a two-part answer to the question. So, I, as we were talking about over dinner, I, I wasn't a particularly good student at the Naval Academy, and um, <laughs> science is not one of my best best things. But I do I know a little bit about radar uh, and how radar works, but. Radar propagates differently than sonar does. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a physics problem. And so the water column in, say, let, let's say up around uh, Greenland, Iceland, Iceland area, is different than the water column off the east coast of the United States, mm -hmm. or different in the Mediterranean. It, and sonar uh, properties behave differently mm -hmm. in those different water columns. So. It, the answer to how the, the, you know it is it is it is literally a physics problem on how how far away those detections can be made, and it is a big it's a large space of of which there's shadows and zones that it's difficult to to detect. On the other side of the coin, um, if you look at if you look at the Russians, for example, very large landmass. 13 time zones, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so the, most of their communication reliance is terrestrial, unlike ours. Ours is, is flows underneath the seabed. So when they're, when they're out doing things, um, they have a, an unclassified program where they, where they look at, um, where, they, where they're, they're mapping undersea cables uh, that there's not you know it, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to think about what they could be doing in the bad side and so uh, you know I can't really talk more about it than that but I can say that uh, it's something that we're uh, we're watching very closely but it sounds like a major undertaking uh, in the sense that you can have a satellite in the sky and know pretty quickly how many planes are within an area. It sounds like a pretty wide area that you have to have naval assets in to try to track and see uh, if Russian subs are operating. It seems pretty complicated. Well, it, it, is, it is complicated and, you know, it's to, to have uh, a perfect picture of what's going on in the subsurface, on the surface, and in the air, it is practically speaking not really reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, um, there there are some things in the in the world of artificial intelligence, in the world of uh, you know machine learning, in which we can gain better situational awareness, mm -hmm. and that where we we can leverage these technologies that uh, are, are out there now uh, that we're and, and, and uh, take to take full advantage of that in order to you know you, you, if you if you think in terms of uh, observe orient decide and act you know an OODA loop which is you know, for those in the military I've heard that probably more times than they care to <laughs> care to hear um, but if, if, if you can tighten down that observe orient so that you get to a decision you know get the dis the information to make a decision to in order to act that's the goal of of leveraging this this kind of technology this is something that, that you know Admiral Richardson who who spoke fairly very um, informed about much more so than I am but that that's that's essentially the uh, as I as I read it. That way.